Hi guys, Karen here. So today I am doing a video that has been very highly requested. I'm going to show you how to put together a jigsaw puzzle. If you didn't see them, I made a five part video series all about my entire puzzle collection. It's about an hour of footage altogether of just me talking about puzzles. That's what I do with my life. And when I made those videos, a ton of you guys asked me to show you guys all of my tips and tricks for putting together a jigsaw puzzle, especially because a lot of you are heading home for the holidays and maybe your family all likes to do a puzzle together. Now you can go home and you will just be the puzzle expert and everyone will think that you're super cool because you're really good at puzzles because that's how that works. All right, so let's get started. So this is the puzzle that I decided to use as my example. It's made by the company Cloudberries. It's their origami puzzle. And full disclosure, they did send this to me for free, but they're not, like this isn't a sponsored video. They're not paying me to talk about it. So I have not done this puzzle before. It is still sealed in the bag. So let's just go ahead and cut that open and pour out all of the pieces and double check that we got all the pieces out because I've definitely thought that a puzzle came missing pieces and then I dug the bag out of the trash and oh look there was like one or two pieces stuck in there. Step one is going to be sorting out all of the edge pieces from all of the inside pieces. So here's how I like to do that. Take this box put it to the side, and then I actually grab a second puzzle box. I'm actually just gonna take the top of the box. I'm gonna take the bottom with all the pieces and just put that to the side in a place where no one's gonna knock it over and lose all of these pieces. So basically what you do is you just pick up a handful of pieces and then you go through it and you put all of the inside pieces here in the big box and you put all of the edge pieces uh, just down on the table in a pile. And as you're moving all of the inside pieces over to the second box, make sure that you put them all face up. So as you start to fill up this box, you're gonna have to start layering the pieces on top of each other, but that's okay. Just make sure that you keep them all face up. And a good rule of thumb for the timing of this step is that I found it takes about a half hour per thousand pieces. So I also just wanna say up front that there is no right way or wrong way to do a puzzle. Um, this is just my technique, but if you do puzzles a different way, please just let me know in the comments what, uh, what the differences are of how you do it and don't say mean things because puzzles are meant to be a nice hobby and we should all be nice here. Uh, so anyway, um, this is also what I like to call the getting to know the puzzle stage because as you take the time to individually put down each piece uh, right side up, you just get a kind of a preview of the kind of pieces that you're gonna be working with and sometimes different colors or textures will jump out at you and that's just what you'll want to remember when you actually start putting the puzzle together. You can sort of start coming up with a plan for which parts to work on first. Also, if you're doing a larger puzzle, you can definitely get two or more of these box tops because if you let it get up to too many layers, you're never gonna get back down to the ones at the bottom. All right, so I'm almost done moving all of these pieces over. And I know that this might seem like a lot of work up front before you even get to the actual puzzling, but trust me, doing this now is gonna save you so much time later. All right, so there we go. We can just move this empty box off to the side for now. And now we have this beautiful box filled with all of our inside pieces all turned over. Trust me, put this in a place where your kids and your pets are not gonna be able to get to it because it really sucks if someone, or even if you, like knock it over and then you have to redo this step. It's the worst. And now we have all of our edge pieces. Go ahead and just like before, turn them all over. Um, basically after this point, none of your pieces should ever be turned over again. I don't always do this step, but for the sake of this video and like puzzling best practices, I'm going to. Um, you can turn all of the pieces so that the edges are all facing the same way. And it's just a lot easier to see everything that you're dealing with if they're 
neatly organized instead of facing every different way. So I actually have this little puzzling superstition and this is just me, this isn't a common thing, but I have a superstition that the first two pieces I put together have to be right. And if they're not right, then that's just a bad omen for the rest of the puzzle. So I always make sure to pick two pieces from my very first ones that I am absolutely sure go together. And I'm pretty sure they fit together. Look at that. So that means we're gonna have a solid puzzle doing experience. So at this point, um, you just kind of start putting the pieces together. It's not really much else to say there. And you have to be careful of pieces that look like they might go together, but don't quite. Like these, if you're just kind of doing it really fast, it might look like that's all one section. But if you look at them really close, you can see a little gap in between the pieces. And so if we look at pieces that actually do go together, there is no gap there. And it's really fun when you start putting together big sections like this. And as you do that and you know like which part of the puzzle they go on, like I know this is part of the side, I'm just gonna move that so it's facing the right way because otherwise you're gonna be moving giant sections around and that is not fun. And there is my first side finished. It's always so satisfying. It's like, you know that you're, you're on the right track when you finished one full side. All right, there it is, the entire edge. It's always so satisfying when you finish the entire thing and you don't have like one or two pieces missing that you have to still search for in the box. So now we're gonna bring back this, uh, this box that we prepared earlier with all of our pieces. And as you go through the box, just use a very gentle like sliding motion so that you're not like pawing through it and turning over all of your pieces. The point here is that you wanna be able to see all of your pieces face up. Also, and this just takes practice, you just have to develop an eye for really little sections on a piece that go with what you're looking for that you think you're gonna need. So I'm actually pulling the bright yellow as well as this kind of tan color, just cause they're very similar. So um, it's a little more time efficient to pull more than one color or pattern at once. And obviously, as you continue doing the puzzle and more of these pieces end up on the board and put together, this part will start to go a lot faster because there will be less pieces to look through to find what you're looking for. Fewer pieces, I think that was supposed to be fewer pieces. All of you grammar people, don't, don't come at me. This isn't scripted, I'm just talking. Okay, so I've been through most of the box and there might still be a few more pieces in here that I can grab later, but I'm gonna put that to the side for now. And now something that I saw um, when I had some of my friends over, something that I saw them doing that really bugged me is they would like stack the pieces on top of each other as they were working. And you never wanna do that because you wanna be able to see all of your pieces. So yeah, there's not really much else to say here. You just start putting them together. And honestly, this is the best part of it for me is actually like putting the pieces together. I feel like getting to this point, it's almost like a delayed gratification because we've done so much work organizing those pieces that we turned over, doing the edge, pulling all of these pieces. And now we finally get to start doing an actual puzzle. Okay, so that is this first yellow section finished and it actually attaches right here to the edge. So I'm just gonna put that in place and I think that's looking great so far. So I have this section finished and I have three pieces that don't seem to attach to that yet. So I actually can tell that this piece goes over here and then I'm just gonna put these three pieces that are kind of similar colors just over here next to it. And this is why I can't do puzzles with other people because in my head, now I know that when I'm looking for a piece with these colors, they're gonna be over there. 
but if someone else came in and like moved them all around, I would have no idea where my pieces were. So honestly, at this point, we're just kind of repeating everything we just did. I think this time I'm gonna look for all of the pink pieces that I can. So when you're looking at some pieces like this, it can be a little overwhelming and you might not really know where to start. I find that you just pick a piece like this that has a very distinctive section in it. So I'm pretty sure that's gonna be this piece. There we go. So now you pick another side, and I think this piece goes there. And now you have two sides, and so it's a lot easier to find a, the corner of a piece than it is just to find one side of it. So I'm pretty sure that's this one. And then you just continue like that. And honestly, it just takes practice and doing a lot of puzzles to be able to visualize the piece that you need and then quickly spot it in the pieces that you have around you. So don't feel like you have to finish each section before you're allowed to move on. If you've just been like staring at a bunch of pieces and nothing is coming together, just put those to the side and then move on to a different section for a little while and when you come back to that first section, uh, you might see something that you just missed before. Okay, so once you have a bunch of these sections figured out, we can take a look at the box to figure out where on the puzzle board they go. Now, if I wasn't doing this on camera, this is definitely the kind of puzzle that I would do without looking at the box and just try to figure out on my own from the pieces how it all comes together but I don't want this video to be 12 hours long. So to speed it up a little, I'm just gonna look at the box and then I know that this pink one goes about here. I know that this red one is over here. Oh, and this one actually connects to the side. So that's handy. This other red one, it looks like is kind of in the middle over here. And then this orange one comes up here next to this red guy on the side. So something to keep in mind as you start searching for your next section that you're gonna work on is to always keep an eye out for pieces from the previous sections that you've worked on. So even though right now I'm looking for these orange pieces, I'm still keeping an eye out for anything yellow or pink or red. And if I find something like that, I can just take a look at what I've already done and fit it into place. So again, this is where doing a puzzle alone has its benefits because you know what's finished and you know what pieces you're still looking for. Another thing I sometimes do is if I find a lot of pieces that might slot into the board somewhere, which will happen more and more as you fill in more sections of it, I just take any pieces that I think connect to anything else they've already done, and I put them in a separate pile. And then after I've finished gathering all of these orange pieces, I'll go back to this pile of other pieces that I think I know where they go, and I'll put them all into place at once. And then I'm not constantly interrupting, looking for pieces and putting stuff down and etc. All right, so before I get started, as I said, on these um, orange pieces, I'm gonna take these pieces that I pulled. And honestly, a lot of finding pieces like this and getting really fast at puzzles. It's just developing a good eye for the teeniest, tiniest little sections. Oh, it's so weird doing a puzzle in silence. Normally when I work on a puzzle, I have either music going or a podcast. Literally all I need to be happy is a good puzzle and a good podcast. I swear, time goes so fast when I'm working on a puzzle. I've literally sat at this very table for nine hours straight, only getting up to like use the bathroom or grab a snack. And it honestly felt like two hours had passed. And then I looked up and the entire day was gone. Oh, it's so satisfying when you have a big section and you think you know where it goes and then it just slots right into place. Do you look at that? It's so beautiful. So you can see that just like I mentioned before, now that we have so many pieces out of this box and on the board, it's a lot quicker to just shuffle through these and there aren't quite so many layers that you're trying to very delicately dig through. Also, I just wanna say that even though I am speeding up a lot of this footage, so it looks like I'm doing this puzzle very quickly, I still 
get a lot of pieces wrong. I still try things in the wrong spot. It's not a race. Don't worry about how long it takes. I'm actually kind of jealous of people who spend longer on each puzzle. That's why I do things like not let myself look at the box or make myself start the puzzle in a spot that's a little more difficult just so I can kind of extend the puzzle doing experience because I think it's so fun and there's no sense in beating yourself up about it if you're not good at it because at the end of the day, when you've finished the puzzle, it's gonna look the same whether you did it really fast or really slow. So now that I have almost all of the cranes finished and in place, you can see that there's not a lot of empty space to spread out the pieces for the ones I still need to finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna swing over to this part of the table over here where I have a lot of empty space and I'm just gonna work over here and then move the sections into the puzzle into place as I finish them. So at this point, since I've finished almost all of the cranes, I'm pretty much pulling every piece that I see that has any part of a crane on it, whether it's these last few that I still need to make or if it's one that I've already started and I just see a few like little edge pieces, I'm just gonna pull all of those and then put them into place like you do in a puzzle. So this is actually my favorite part of the puzzle now, where you have all of the big sections in place and you have about half or maybe a little more than half of the pieces where they need to be. And now it feels like you're kind of filling in sections instead of creating new islands. So that's kind of a shift from the first half of the puzzle to the second half of the puzzle. All right, so now that I've put in place all of those pieces that I had pulled out the last time, I'm gonna take one more pass through all of these blue pieces and I'm gonna pull anything that I can find that has even the tiniest little bit of paper crane on it. So the reason why I do this is because even though there is only the teeniest, tiniest sliver of white on the edge of this piece, there are only so many places in the puzzle where this piece could go. It can only go on the outline of one of the white cranes. So that's a little bit of information that lets me figure out where this piece goes. And since we have a whole lot of blue that we're gonna be filling in, I want to minimize that as much as possible. So any pieces that have information that limit where on the puzzle they can go, I want to put those in first and get them out of the way and then I can concentrate on all of the blank blue that is in between them. All right, so now that all of those pieces are in place, you can see that if we bring back the box, Basically, the only pieces left are the blue that goes in between all of these cranes. And I'm sure you're wondering, like, it's easy enough to put together different colors of cranes, but how the heck do you even start to tackle this much blue? And I have got a little trick for you. Basically, we're going to bring back the bottom from the original puzzle box just so that we have a little more surface area to work with. And then we're going to sort the pieces by type of piece. All right, so that is all of the pieces sorted by the type of piece. So if we look at this box, we have the most common type of puzzle piece, which is this one. You can see it has two outs on each end and then two ins in the middle. That's kind of the classic puzzle piece. So I have all of those here in this box and they're all pretty much all facing the same direction. So next, if we look at this box, over here on this side, we have these pieces, which have an out on the top and then three ins. So we have two of these little square guys on the bottom. Next to them, we have these, which have two outs and they have this little corner between them and then two ins and they have one of those little square guys. Then in this section of the box are the kind of triangle shaped ones where it has 
three outs with two of these little corners in between them and then one in on the bottom. And then up here on the top, we only have one of these guys left. It has four outs and we've got a couple of these guys which have four ins. So again, it might seem like a lot of work to sort all of these out, but I promise that when you have so many pieces that are the same color, it makes it go so much faster in the long run. So for example, let's take a look at this piece. You can see we're looking for a piece that has an out here and then an in and an in. So it has one of these little square guys. So that means that everything in this box, I don't even have to worry about. So I know it has to be either these or these. And so that gives me way fewer pieces to look through in order to find the piece I'm looking for. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be this one. So let's try it out, and it fits. Okay, so now I know I'm looking for this piece, which is going to be in this box. So I can disregard basically half the pieces I have left. So I'm pretty sure I've got it. I think it's this one. There we go. So now we can just kind of continue that for the rest of the puzzle. Another thing to keep in mind is your color perception. So for example, I can see down in this section, the blue in the background is very bright. Whereas up here, and I'll show you two different pieces to compare, you can see this is a much darker blue. It's a very different blue than down here. So if you want to practice your color perception, I actually have been playing this iPhone game called I Love Hue, and it just, Basically, the entire goal is to just put colors back in order. There's no time limit, it's super relaxing, but you really get to practice your color perception and just be able to recognize different colors a lot more easily. And I found that I am very good at that game, but I think that's because I've done so many jigsaw puzzles that I have practiced my kind of color sensitivity, and so I can just very easily put colors in order. And so if you're not good at it, um, playing that iPhone game is kind of a lower stakes version of doing a big jigsaw puzzle like this, and it's an easy way to practice your color perception on the go. So this is actually coming together a lot more quickly than I expected, and I think that's partly because we have these vertical lines going through a lot of the pieces, which help to orient them one way or the other. And also because the color differences is a little more dramatic than I had originally thought, so it's pretty easy to figure out which pieces say go here versus over here. And let me tell you, there is no worse feeling than when you think you know when a piece goes somewhere, especially if it's all filled in, you just have one piece left, and then you go to snap it in and it just does not fit, but there is no better feeling than when you have found the right piece and you're absolutely sure of where it goes, and then you just snap it into place, and it's so satisfying to do that. I feel like every puzzle has one piece that you just cannot find, no matter how hard you look for it. For me, it is this piece right here. It has this funny little square thing on the end. I spent so much time searching for it, and I just cannot find it. It'll turn up eventually, I'm sure, but it's just really bugging me right now. You guys, I did it. I found my piece that I had been looking for for so long. I'm so happy. So this is another phase of the puzzle process. And that is when you've put in enough pieces that you can see all of them all at the same time. We just have one layer of pieces. I can see everything that I have left. And so now when I'm looking for a specific piece, I know that it's gotta be somewhere in here and it's not covered up. All right, so I am so close to being done. And so at this point, I'm actually gonna consolidate these two boxes so that I'm not constantly switching between them. 
All right, and now I have all of my faces left right here. I only have to look in one spot, so let's finish this guy off. Oh, and also, please ignore what I said earlier about uh, the blue coming together a little quicker than I expected because it has not been going very quickly and I'm pretty sure it's taken longer just to do like half of the blue pieces than it took to do the entire rest of the puzzle. All right guys, the very last piece. There it is, there's the puzzle. Oh, that was a bit of a process. I started this at about 9 a.m. Well, I sorted out all of the edge pieces yesterday, but then I started putting it together at 9 a.m. this morning, and now it is 3 p.m. So that was about six hours total of puzzling with maybe another hour, hour and a half yesterday. So anytime I talk about puzzles, I feel like the question I get asked the most often is, what do you do with the puzzle once you're done with it? And instead of telling you, I'm going to show you. Are you ready? You ready? I take it apart. <laughs> Literally, I just take a few pictures, and look at it for, you know, leave it together for a day or two, or in this case, like five minutes, and then I take it apart. People always ask if I have any like tips for, for gluing puzzles together and hanging them on the wall, and honestly, I do not because I have never done it. I think the only puzzle I still have left together is the 9,000 piece one that I did once, and that's only because I know I'm never gonna do that one again. But with a small like thousand piece puzzle like this that takes six hours, I don't wanna spend the money on a puzzle and then only be able to do it once. I'd rather, if it's a puzzle that I like, like this one, I would rather be able to do it multiple times. Also, if you're like me and you have dozens and dozens of jigsaw puzzles and you do them pretty regularly, if you did just leave them together, you would just end up with stacks and piles of puzzles and literally nobody has enough wall space to hang them up on the wall. Also, I think that what makes a good piece of wall art and what makes a good jigsaw puzzle are two very different things. You can definitely buy jigsaw puzzles that you enjoy the picture of and want to hang on your wall, but you can also just buy a puzzle because you think it would be fun to put together even if it's not something that you actually want to display all the time, which is the case for most of the puzzles that I do. So there we go, that's the puzzle back in its original form. Again, like I said earlier, there's no right way or wrong way to do a puzzle. So this is just my method. So if you do your puzzles any differently, please let me know in the comments. Again, I wanna say a huge thank you to Cloudberries for sending me this puzzle. If you wanna get one for yourself, I'll put a link to where you can get it down in the description. All right, so back to me on camera. So I hope you guys liked that video. Thank you for giving me an excuse to do a puzzle and kind of call it work. Kind of make me feel like I was being productive even when I was just doing a puzzle. I would love to know in a comment if you ever do jigsaw puzzles and what is your favorite puzzle that you have ever done. And if you're still watching until the end of the video, the code word for the comments is puzzle pieces. So just use the phrase puzzle pieces somewhere in your comment and I'll know that you watched the entire video and you will be my favorite puzzler. All right, so this is my last video of the year. As of right now, I am on Christmas vacation. So thank you guys so much for watching, whether you've been watching my channel for 10 years, uh, my 10 year anniversary of my first video is coming up in January, so that's crazy. Um, but also thank you if you just subscribed, if you're new here, even if this is the first video that you've ever watched. I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas. I'm gonna go home and do a bunch of puzzles. That sounds fake because this video is about puzzles, but honestly, that's all I do over Christmas is I just do one puzzle after the other. So stay tuned to my Instagram if you wanna see pictures of all the puzzles I'm doing. And thank you so much for watching all year long. I will be back in the new year with a new video. I actually already filmed 
my first video for next year. It's all about how I stay organized, which I thought uh, would be useful for the new year. So stay tuned for that. And I'm gonna go celebrate Christmas. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday. Happy puzzling, and I'll see you guys next time. Nope, I'll see you guys next year. I only get to make that joke once a year, so I am taking it. <laughs>